Combustion. A combustion reaction happens when oxygen gas, O2, combines with specific compounds, often referred to as fuel. Imagine a cozy campfire burning in the night. Combustion reactions are like that fire but on a molecular level. When something burns like wood or fuel in your car, it's combining with oxygen in the air. This mixing creates heat and light, making it a so-called exothermic reaction. For example, when you light a candle, the wax combines with oxygen, making carbon dioxide and water vapor, and giving off light and heat. It's like a tiny, controlled explosion. Picture a rocket blasting off into space, leaving a trail of fire and smoke behind. That spectacular display is a combustion reaction in action. Inside the rocket engines, a fuel, often a mixture of liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen, ignites. As the fuel burns, it combines rapidly with the oxygen from the air, releasing a huge amount of energy. Synthesis in synthesis reactions, atoms or molecules come together to form a new compound. For instance, when hydrogen gas, H2, meets oxygen gas, O2, they combine to create liquid water, H2O. It's like a magical union, where different things join forces to become something new. This reaction is fascinating because it turns two flammable gases into a substance that can actually extinguish fires. Sometimes, synthesis reactions don't just create one product but can lead to multiple outcomes. An example is the famous photosynthesis. Plants combine sunlight, carbon dioxide, CO2, and water, H2O, to produce glucose, a form of sugar, as food and oxygen gas as a byproduct, sustaining life on Earth. Synthesis reactions are also utilized in the production of pharmaceuticals, chemicals, and materials such as fertilizers and plastics. Decomposition. Imagine you have a big, fancy cake. Now, imagine taking that cake and breaking it down into its individual ingredients, flour, sugar, eggs, and so on. That's what decomposition is all about, breaking things apart. In chemistry, it's like taking a complex molecule and splitting it into simpler pieces. It's the reverse of synthesis. For example, when you heat baking soda, sodium bicarbonate, it breaks down into sodium carbonate, water vapor, and carbon dioxide gas. That explains how your baked cookies get so fluffy. So, decomposition reactions are like chemistry's way of taking things apart, revealing their hidden ingredients. They are also used in processes like digestion and the decomposition of organic matter in composting, precipitation. In chemistry, when two liquids containing dissolved substances are mixed, Sometimes a solid substance forms and settles to the bottom, just like the sand in the sea. This solid is called a precipitate. For example, when you mix solutions of silver nitrate and sodium chloride, they react to form a white precipitate of silver chloride. It's like chemistry's way of making things rain inside a test tube, forming solid particles that settle out of the solution. You can make your own chalk paint knowing this. If you combine calcium chloride and mix it with a solution of sodium carbonate, Na2CO3, they react to form calcium carbonate, KCO3, which is insoluble in water and precipitates out as a fine white solid. Precipitation is also used in water treatment to remove contaminants and in qualitative analysis to identify the presence of specific ions. Single replacement reaction. Imagine you're at a party and someone swaps partners on the dance floor. Single replacement reactions are like that, atoms swapping dance partners in a chemical reaction. In these reactions, a single element replaces another element in a compound. It's like a chemistry dance-off where one element says, I want to dance with that compound instead. A classic example is the explosive reaction when potassium, K, encounters water, H2O. In this reaction, potassium displaces hydrogen from water, resulting in the formation of hydrogen gas and potassium hydroxide, KOH, a solid dissolved in the water. The reaction releases energy in the form of heat, making it exothermic. These reactions are used in metallurgy for metal extraction and in battery technology for electrochemical reactions. Double displacement reactions. Imagine you have two couples dancing together and suddenly they decide to swap partners. Double displacement reactions work in a similar way. In these reactions, the positive ions, charged atoms called cations, and negative ions, known as anions, in two compounds, switch places to form two new compounds. It's like a chemistry square dance, where partners exchange and create new pairs. For example, when you mix solutions of silver nitrate and sodium chloride, the silver ions, Ag+, from silver nitrate switch places with the sodium ions, Na+, from sodium chloride, forming silver chloride, a white solid precipitate, and sodium nitrate. It's a lively exchange that results in the formation of two distinct compounds. These reactions are involved in processes such as water softening, metal plating, and salt formation. Acid-base reactions. 
Think of acid-base reactions like a chemistry meetup between opposites. Acids, which taste sour like vinegar or lemon juice, team up with bases, often found in cleaning supplies like bleach or detergent. When they come together, it's like a chemistry showdown where they exchange partners, creating a new compound and often a cloudy precipitate. This partnership is unique because in this case they neutralize each other's properties, like canceling out sourness or bitterness. That's why you call this reaction a neutralization reaction. When you mix citric acid, found in citrus fruits, with baking soda, a base, you create a fizzing, bubbling reaction. The citric acid donates hydrogen ions, H+, while the baking soda provides hydroxide ions, OH-. These ions combine to form water and carbon dioxide gas, which creates a fizzing effect, resembling a miniature volcanic eruption. But not all acid-base reactions are neutralizations. For instance, when hydrochloric acid, HCl, a strong acid, reacts with ammonia, NH3, a weak base, the resulting solution is acidic because the acid is much stronger than the base. The solution remains acidic. These reactions are fundamental in various applications, including pH regulation and many industrial processes. Redox reactions. Redox reactions involve both oxidation, adding oxygen, and reduction, adding hydrogen or removing oxygen simultaneously. Imagine a chemistry tug of war between atoms, where one side gains and the other loses. Redox reactions are like this, where one substance gains electrons, reduction, while another loses electrons, oxidation. It's like a game of give and take, where electrons are the prize. When you mix iron, Fe, with oxygen, O2, Iron loses electrons, oxidation to oxygen, which gains electrons, reduction, forming iron oxide, Fe2O3, commonly known as rust. Redox reactions are utilized in corrosion prevention, electroplating, and energy storage devices like batteries. Catalysis Catalysis is like having a matchmaker at a party, someone who speeds up connections between others without getting involved themselves. In chemistry, a catalyst is a substance that accelerates a chemical reaction without being consumed in the process. It works by providing an alternative pathway for the reaction to occur, lowering the activation energy needed for the reaction to proceed. Think of it as a shortcut that helps molecules overcome their shyness and interact more readily. Catalysts can increase the rate of reactions, making them happen faster or at lower temperatures, but they don't change the final products. When manganese dioxide, MnO2, is added as a catalyst to hydrogen peroxide, it accelerates its decomposition, which can take a long time, into water and oxygen gas. The manganese dioxide provides a surface for the reaction to occur, facilitating the decomposition process. Catalysis is widely applied in industry for the production of chemicals, fuels, and pharmaceuticals, as well as in environmental processes such as pollution control and emission reduction. Neutralization Neutralization reactions are like chemistry peace treaties. They bring together acids and bases to cancel out each other's effects. When an acid and a base react, they form water and a salt, resulting in a neutral solution. This process effectively neutralizes the acidic or basic properties of the initial solutions. For example, when you mix hydrochloric acid, HCl, with sodium hydroxide, NaOH, they react to form water and sodium chloride, NaCl, a common table salt. It's like a chemistry handshake, where opposites come together and find balance, creating a neutral outcome. Neutralization reactions are used for antacid medications, food processing, and wastewater treatment. Complexation in these reactions, multiple so-called ligands, an ion or molecule attached to a metal atom, such as ammonia, water, or carbon monoxide, surround the central metal atom, forming a coordination complex. Complexation reactions are like chemistry matchmaking events, where a metal atom plays the role of the eligible bachelor, and ligands are the charming suitors vying for its attention. It's like a glamorous ball where the metal atom is the star, surrounded by a retinue of ligand partners. For instance, when cobalt chloride, COCl2, is added to water, the cobalt ions, CO2+, form a salt bond with water molecules to form the coordination complex. Complexation reactions find everyday applications in water treatment, food preservation, photography, detergent formulation, and textile dyeing, contributing to various industrial processes and improving product performance. Subscribe to see more videos like this one and let us know in the comments which topic you want to see next.